The Grizzlies take on the Cavaliers, 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in Cleveland. The Grizzlies are the one-point favorite, total at 224. And we saw a half a point fade of Memphis and movement downward on the total. The Grizzlies open one and a half down to minus one. Total open 224 and a half down to 224 even. 74% of the consensus are leaning toward Memphis. 69% shaded toward the under. Right now the Cavaliers are plus 102 on the money line. Cleveland's dropped eight out of their last 10 games. They're also just 7-21 and 21 overall for the year. Obviously, they're in last place in the Central Division, and they are 17 and a half games back in that division. They failed to cover in seven out of their last nine games. Failures to cover coming against Charlotte, Orlando, and Detroit. Cleveland also ranks in the bottom three in scoring, bottom five in offensive field goal percentage. Now, this Cleveland squad... They've also failed to win in 10 out of their 14 home games. That's right, just 4 and 10 straight up at home. They're scoring just 104 points per contest on their home court. And they failed to cover in 9 out of their 14 home games. One more thing to add about Cleveland. They rank dead last in the association in defensive field goal percentage. Now Memphis on the other side, 4 and 2 straight up in their last 6. They've successfully covered the point spread in five out of those six games. They have successful covers over the likes of OKC, Miami, and Phoenix during that stretch. John Morant's averaging 19 points a game, seven assists. Jaron Jackson, 17 points a game, five rebounds for him. And Dylan Brooks, 14 points a game, three rebounds for the Grizzlies. Memphis ranks 11th in offensive field goal percentage. They're also 11th in defensive rebounding. They're shooting 46% from the field this year. When it comes to the total, Memphis is 4-0 to the over in their last four. Cleveland 3-1 to the over in their last four themselves. I'm going to lean toward the road chalk in this one. Give me Memphis minus one in the over 224 in that game. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick timeout and welcome you to the show. Got some lines of personal leans out for Friday's NBA action. Happy Friday to you. The weekend is finally here. Now, before we dive into some more free lines of personal liens right here on YouTube, I just want to take a quick time out and remind you to check me out on my website at patreon.com slash rock page, where we do daily premium picks on that site beginning at just $1.99 per month. We have a bunch of different memberships, tiers, and packages that you can subscribe to. Right now, we are four in one. In our last five daily best plays on that site. And that package costs just $1.99 per month. You can also access my current record for free right now. It's right on the homepage. All you have to do is click the link in the description section below. That is patreon.com slash Brock page. All right, moving on. We have the Kings taking on the Pacers. 7 o'clock Eastern tip off in Indiana. The Pacers are the four and a half point favorite total at 208 and a half. Indiana's 19 and 9 straight up on the year, and they are a very impressive 12 and 3 straight up at home. Now, they're right in the middle of a four game winning streak where they went 4 0 against the spread in those four victories. They rank the top five in offensive field goal percentage, top 10 in three point percentage. Malcolm Brogdon is averaging 19 points a game, five rebounds, eight assists. Damana Sabonis, 18 points a game, 13 rebounds, and 4 assists for him. And TJ Warren, 18 points a game, 4 rebounds. Now keep an eye on Warren as he is listed as questionable for tonight's action. But regardless, this Indiana squad has outright victories over the likes of the Lakers and Boston within their last four games. They rank the top 5 in points allowed, top 10 in defensive rebounding. They're allowing just 103 points per contest on their home court. Now, the Kings on the other side failed to cover in three out of their last four. They also rank in the bottom five in scoring. They have failures to cover against the likes of Charlotte, the Knicks, and OKC. They rank dead last in offensive rebounding, and they're in the bottom 10 in defensive field goal percentage. Now, the Sacramento squad is 11 games back of first place in the Pacific Division. They've also won just six out of their 16 road games this year. They're scoring just 105 points per contest away from home. And they rank dead last in road offensive rebounding. Now, five out of Sacramento's last seven did stay under the total. Meanwhile, Indiana 7-1 to the under in their last eight themselves. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down. 
and take Indiana minus four in the under 208 and a half in that game. Next matchup, Pistons, Celtics, 730 Boston. The Celtics are the eight-point favorite at the Garden. Totals at 214 and a half. We saw a half a point move toward Boston and movement downward on the total. The Celtics open seven and a half up to minus eight. Total open 215 down to 214 and a hook. 68% are leaning Boston, 63% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Pistons are plus 315 on the money line. Detroit's also dropped three out of their last four games. They're just four and nine straight up on the road this year as well. They rank in the bottom five in offensive rebounding, bottom 10 in defensive field goal percentage. This Detroit squad is 13 and a half games back in the Central Division. They're also scoring just 106 points per contest away from home. Now, a couple more things to add here about Detroit. They lost 10 out of their last 15 games when they were the underdog. And they're just 4-9 against the spread when traveling. Now, Boston on the other side, a little bit different story. Winners in 7 out of their last 10. They have outright victories over Dallas, Denver, and Miami during that span. They're 18-7 straight up overall for the year. And they are tied for first in the Atlantic Division. Kemba Walker's averaging 24 points a game, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Jason Tatum, 21 points a game, 7 rebounds for him. And Jalen Brown, 20 points a game, 7 rebounds for the Celtics. Boston's 10-1 straight up at the Garden this year. 8-3 against the spread in those 11. They're allowing just 105 points per contest at home. And they rank in the top 10 in the association in home defensive rebounding. Now, four out of Boston's last six stayed under the total. Meanwhile, Detroit, 4-2 to the under in their last six themselves. I'm going to lean toward the home chalk in this one. Give me Boston minus eight in the under 214 and a half in that contest. Next matchup, it is going to be Wizards taking on the Raptors. And that's going to be a 730 Eastern tip off in Toronto. The Raptors are the six and a half point favorite total at 232. We saw a one point fade of Toronto in movement downward on the total. The Raptors open seven and a half down to minus six and a half. Total open 232 and a half down to 232 even. Toronto's 5-1 straight up in their last six. They're also 3-0 against the spread in their last trio of ball games. The Raptors are tied for first place in the Atlantic Division. They're 11-3 straight up in Toronto. The ranking in the top three in three-point percentage, top 10 in offensive rebounding. This Raptors squad is scoring 117 points per game at home. And they're ranking in the top 10 in points allowed. Now the Wizards on the other side really struggling as of late. Losers in eight out of their last 10. They also covered just 30% of those games. They're just four and 11 straight up on the road, bottom three in offensive rebounding. This Washington squad is in fourth place in the Southeast division. And they're 11 games back of first place in that division. The rank dead last in points allowed, bottom three in defensive field goal percentage. They're allowing 121 points per contest when traveling. Three out of Washington's last five got over the total. They're also 60% to the over away from home. Toronto's 9-5 and five to the over at home themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Raptors, minus 6.5, and, and the over 232 in that contest. Next matchup, it is going to be Knicks taking on the Heat. 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off in Miami. The Heat are the 10-point favorite, total at 214.5. Now, we did see a 1-point fade of Miami and movement upward on the total. The Heat opened minus 11, down to minus 10. Total open 214, up to 214 and a hook. 68% are leaning Miami, 66% shaded toward the over. Right now the Knicks are plus 475 on the money line. The Knicks have also dropped 7 out of their last 10. They're 3-11 straight up away from home, and they rank dead last in scoring on average per game. Now a couple more things to add about New York. They rank in the bottom 3 in offensive field goal percentage, where they're also just 7-21 and 21 straight up overall for the year, which is good for last place in the Atlantic Division. They're averaging just 101 points per contest on the road, and they rank in the bottom five in road defensive rebounding. Now Miami on the other side, winners in 7 out of their last 10. They're also 4-1 and one against the spread in their last 5. They rank the top 5 in offensive field goal percentage. They also rank the top 3 in shooting the 3 ball, Jimmy Butler is averaging 21 points a game, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals. Kendrick Nunn, 17 points a game, 4 assists. And Bam Adebayo, 11 rebounds a game. He's averaging double-digit rebounds there. He's also averaging 16 points a game and 5 assists. Miami's 10-2 against the spread in South Beach. 
They rank first in the association in home defensive rebounding, and they're allowing just 103 points per contest on their home court. Miami 6-0 and to the over in their last six, 8-4 to the over at home. I'm going to lean Miami Heat minus 10 in the over 214.5 in that contest. Next game, Mavericks taking on the Sixers. 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off in South Philly. The Sixers are the 8.5 point favorite, total at 213 and a hook. We saw a 1.5 point move toward Philadelphia and movement downward on the total. The Sixers open as the 7 point favorite, up to minus 8.5. Total open 214, down to 213 and a hook. 54% are leaning Dallas, 76% shaded toward the over. Right now the Mavs are plus 320 on the money line. Dallas has dropped three out of their last five games, where they also failed to cover in three out of those five matchups. Obviously, Luka Doncic is still out with an injury, and they're allowing 111 points per contest on the road. Now, Philadelphia on the other side, very good at home. They're 14-1 and straight up at the Wells Fargo Center, 7-3 and straight up in their last 10 games played at any location. They're tied for first place in the Atlantic Division. Joel Embiid, 23 points a game, 13 rebounds. Tobias Harris, 20 points a game, 7 rebounds on average. He is averaging, and of course, Josh Richardson, 15 points a game, 3 assists for him. Philly ranks at the top 3 in offensive field goal percentage, top 10 in shooting the 3 ball. They're giving up just 99 points per contest at home, and they rank in the top three in home defensive rebounding. Now, total-wise, Philadelphia is 5-2 and two to the over in their last seven. Dallas, 3-1 and one to the over in their last four themselves. They're also 9-3 and three to the under when traveling. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take Philadelphia minus eight in the over 213.5 and a half 